Yeah, welcome to JMTVGH. As I'm talking to you right now, I am at uh, Nigo, New Nigo, Pram Pram, where we call the Ancestral War. Uh, I've heard about this name for so long, but I don't know where it is. Today I lost more than one hour before I get to here, I'm telling you. And when I came here, I saw a very beautiful thing, and it is so marvelous. I don't know who did it, so I have my uh, grandmothers and my grandfathers here. I will not say they are my father. Very seriously, when you see them, you can see that they are not a, a young anymore. They are very, very old age. And them having this mind to have something like that for her, it is so marvelous. So I want to ask them, uh, are they Africans? Are they coming from Ghana here? Are they coming from Togo? Are they coming from Nigeria or where part of Africa? So that they can tell us their small history. Before I ask them about ancestors, I can see even some of the leaders coming from Africa. I see their pictures on the wall. I don't know them. <laughs> Seriously, I don't see them. I don't hear their name before. So let me go to them and ask them uh, what inspired them doing this. So before them, let me welcome them so that we can start the conversation. Uh, welcome my grandfather and my grandmothers. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I call you people because I'm a very young man okay. and I know that you can give birth to my mom or my dad, something like that. So uh, my name is James Kwame Mauko Atagbolo, uh, but my channel name is JMTVGH. So if you can mention your name to me, Sorry. I'm starting from you, Da. Uh, I'm Jerry Johnson. Okay, Jerry Johnson from... Yeah. What? Uh, from California in the USA, but uh, I lived in other places too in the U.S. Oh, okay, that's before good. Before then. Okay, Grandma, you please. Marimba Ani. Okay, from where? I was born in New York City, Harlem. Okay. I live now in Atlanta, Georgia, and Prom Prom, New Ningo. Okay. The ancestral wall. Okay. And mommy? Aboma Johnson. Okay, and from what? Bogatanga. Ghana here? Yes, Ghana here. So you are Ghanaian? I'm a Ghanaian. Uh, mm -hmm. You are my own. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so me let me too. start. I am your own. Everybody is my own. Not everybody. Yeah, all of you. <laughs> you are my own. Good, because you are my grandmother. So very soon I will come and live in your house. So let me start from our dad. Though they said ladies first, but so far as That's uh, fine. yeah. So let me start from him, please. Uh, uh, pardon me, dad. If I could ask, you are from <laughs> California, right? Yes. How did you hear about Ghana before coming here to set up something very beautiful like this? Well, I was raised. Um, in a family that was active in, in black issues, politics, okay. and what we call the movement at the time. Okay. And as I learned more, I began to understand that Africa was central to the solutions to the problems of African people. Okay. Growing up in the U.S., uh, you don't have much exposure to Africa, okay. uh, so you don't know much about it, and what you know is negative. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I got older, into my late teens, early 20s, I began to learn more about Africa. Okay. Sometime in my later 20s, I read Marcus Garvey, and he seemed to me to make the most sense okay. in terms of um, the uplift and the empowerment of African people worldwide. Okay. So that got me curious. I started studying the history, and of course, you study a while, but then you have to come see for yourself. Okay. So in the early 1990s, I came to uh, Senegal, Ghana. Mm -hmm. And from there, I just realized it was a place for me. It was better for me. And I also feel like I can do more uh, towards Garvey's vision okay. than I could where I was. Okay, so you come to Ghana here for how, how long or how many years now? About 18 years. 18 years. Yes. Okay, so uh, if I may ask, the ancestral, are you the one who set up? Yes, yes. And the reason I did that is because I was going into a lot of the schools trying to share more of the African history because 
like the U.S., we really don't have enough African history in our schools for African children. Okay. Um, so it's not just a problem of Africa, but being here in Ghana, it seemed to me to be particularly uh, e egregious mm -hmm. since this is our own land. Okay. So I was going to different schools, and after a while, the logistics become difficult driving here and there because okay. there's so many schools. Mm -hmm. So I got the idea that if I put these pictures on the walls, mm -hmm. the drawings, then we could bring the students and we could have excursions and it would be much, much uh, more effective and efficient and I could see more students. So why not California but Ghana? Well, as I say, in Africa you have the population, you have the resources, mm -hmm. and you have the land. Okay. And you own and control it, or at least if you don't own and control it, you should own and control it. Yeah. In the U.S., we really don't have any of those things. We're in the minority, I hate to use the word minority, but we're in the context of the U.S., mm -hmm. you know, we don't have the same nu numerical okay. strength that okay. you have here. Okay. Uh, the land doesn't belong to us. Okay. Uh, we've been holding less than 1% of the land since slavery times, okay. and it hasn't changed. And of course, the resources that are under the land, we have absolutely nothing to say about it, do about it. Black people in the country don't even know where it is. Mm -hmm. So land resources population, we don't have it in the U.S. We have all of those things here. It's just a question of can we organize our energies and our spirit and our mind uh, to build ourselves a nation okay. so that we need. So we'll show you the way to Ghana and not anywhere at Pram Pram. Who showed me the way to? Yes. Prom Prom or Ghana? Yes. Well, to Prom Prom, I came out here with a friend of mine. His uh, mother was from here, and I was visiting. Okay. And so his family was from out here, so I just came to visit. Okay. And then I liked the place out here. I had been to Ghana several times by then, but I had not been to Prom Prom. So I liked it. 2002 was that time, and uh, of course there was nothing out here mm -hmm. at the time. So I decided to see if I could get establish myself here. So you, you set up this ancestral war for how many years now? No, no, this has only started in 2017. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2017. 2017. But the thing with the students and all mm -hmm. had been going on for years before that. Oh, I see. We were even trying to do things in Legon also okay. with the college students, but mm -hmm. I realized that uh, it's more effective, at least in my view, to go for the younger students. Mm. I know that setting up Things like this in Africa had been a problem, and you might face a lot of difficult. What inspired you to continue to set up, to invite students, to invite people to come and see what they, our ancestors left for us? Well, what do you mean by what problems are you talking about? In terms of coming to Ghana, set up something like this, this, this maybe this authority might say, no, this thing. You can't do it here, oh, this thing, you can't oh, set up here. Oh. Yeah. Well, well, to me, any impediments or any, anything in front of us like that mm -hmm. is very, very small and trivial compared to the scope of the mission that we have ahead of us. Okay. So we have a lot of work to do. We have big things to think about in the future. We have a, a big vision to, to materialize. And so the things having to do with just local problems Okay. They're very small in comparison to the work we have because to do. So it doesn't be there facing a lot of their distance. So as for local one, you don't have problem of. Oh well, there's always some local problems. Mm. What I'm trying to say is, yeah. compared to what we're trying to do, okay. we can't allow these small local problems really to, to overcome you to slow us. Okay. We just deal with them when they, we see them, and we keep moving because we're here for a reason. Okay. So tell me, are, are you? Have you set up this thing alone or your organization, having a lot of people? No, we don't have organization, but we have had people help okay. um, all the way along the way. Family, friends, you know, have helped. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sister, yeah, you wanted to say something. Tell me, how did you get to know our brother Jerry? And <laughs> yes, I am ash. And, and you have this, this passion to, 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 to come and be part of this organization who set up a very beautiful ancestral world here? This is a big question. Yeah. Okay. Um, I met Jerry in 
2006, was it 2006 when we met? Five. Five, okay, 2005. And in fact, you know, this is a, 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 an advice to the young people mm -hmm. going to marriage. Yeah, okay. You know, when you meet people, you have to have one destiny. Yeah, I mean, you have to think the same. Okay. So I liked his ideas and his, you know, he, he had something African in him. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm that kind of person. Oh, okay. I love everything African. Mm -hmm. So when I met him, I realized when um, whatever he wanted to do, if I add my energy, if I push him, we would get there. Okay. So hmm. what, everything that he told me, mm -hmm. I want to do this, I said, come on, go ahead. Okay. So I will support you, you know. So, so, so you having that idea? Meeting Mr. Jerry, you couldn't think of, oh, Mr. Jerry is not coming from Ghana, uh, where I was coming from, or Mr. Jerry is from this part, so I don't like, because you know we, we love those things. Yeah. Uh, oh, this person is not coming from my side, so you doesn't thought of any of those things? I, I have to add something right here. Yeah. Something about her. Mm -hmm. I've never met a person, well, not ever, but very few people that you meet in Ghana, mm -hmm. especially uh, women. Yeah. But in general, as long as we were, she was working, you know, with me and I was seeing her there, mm. she never asked me one single question about America. Not once. Mm. I said, this woman mm -hmm. is an African. Yeah. She's not interested in, what are they doing in New York? Ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah. Okay. I never heard anything. Okay. I said, hey, you know, wow. this, is this one is not interested in this nonsense. Yeah, because to me, you know, I, so I was very impressed with that. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, that's good. <laughs> I didn't even know that one. <laughs> He's telling Today before you study, uh -huh. okay. that, oh, oh, oh. That, that's one of the secrets that I, I, I uh, brought uh, out. Uh. So, madam, tell me a, a little bit. For From 2005 till now, how did the journey be? Um, it hasn't been easy, but, you know, with the help of um, the ancestors okay. and other people, it mm. has been easy. Okay. Yes. We have a lot of people that have come in to support us okay. through this journey because we can't do it alone mm. without the help and the support of other people. Okay. Mm. So if we have anything to give, we have to give thanks to Mama Marimba here. Mm -hmm. and Our then, grandma. Yes. Yeah. She has been a, he, she has been supportive <laughs> to um, the ancestral wall okay. and some other people that have passed. Okay. Baba Rufus. Rufus. I okay. mean, we hold that man in heart. He is one of our biggest. I mean, the very day he met Jerry, this is the son. Okay. And uh, Sister Sheriki, mm. they, they are so grace and perfect peace. That's great. They are all part of the African ancestral wall. I mm -hmm. wish they were here to mm -hmm. see yeah. the progress of the African ancestral wall. They are seeing it. They are yes. here. Yeah. So mm -hmm. don't worry. Mm -hmm. So tell me, uh, you having that mind, were you being in church before? <laughs> <laughs> You've asked a question. I've been yeah. a Christian before. Yes. Uh, yes. And what, what and, happened? And I realized they were cheating me. Mm. Me per se. For how long? Uh, they've cheated me for so long. Mm. So I decided to stop going to church. Okay. Yes. That was before she met me. Before I met him. Oh, really? The other people taught me. So not, not him changing you? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. The other people thought maybe he influenced me to stop going to church. Mm -hmm. But I had seen the other side of the church. That wasn't good for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because um, I used to go to church and I realized after church I will walk. Mm -hmm. I will walk miles to my house and the mm -hmm. pastor and the children would ride the, the VH. <laughs> and those days the big cars and I'll be talking to myself when mm -hmm. I'm walking. I said, this is nonsense. Why would I go and give my money, my everything? In fact, we empty the purse before we go point. home. Mm -hmm. I said, but why would I do this? And be walking and the shoes are hot. So one day I just woke up and said, look, this one me, I'm done. So, so can we say the question you'll be asking yourself, that lead you to where you are today? Yes. The generations should ask the same question themselves? Yes, they do. They oh. have to. Mm. They have to. And because. they are. Okay, for us, for my own, just uh, 2020 lockdown, that pushed me. To stay. That there's something somewhere. Let me look for my route. Yes. This is where I am today. Wow. When I show you my 2020 picture, you'll be shocked. 
Ah. Uh, so that's how it is. Let's continue. So <laughs> let me come to grandma small. You'll come to grandma. Yeah. So. Nana. <laughs> nana. Yeah, nana. nana. Uh, grandma. I am here. Tell me. <laughs> yes. All they be say is your support, your help that push them to this far. You being with the young one. Yes. For how long did you realize that no, we Africans we have to come back to our roots to, to push our ancestors things that they have left for us? For how long? Uh, how old are you? 34 years. 34. 34. 34. Oh, you're old. 34. <laughs> 34. Mm. That's old. I was, um, when I was 22. Okay. Um, there was a big movement going on in the States. Okay. And students, black, all black students, okay. got involved. And they. Let me give you the mic. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And they. Um, were protesting and demonstrating and getting arrested all over the South. Okay. And I was in Chicago mm -hmm. in school. I saw this and it just absolutely changed my life. I said, wow. I have to be there. Wow. And that was the beginning of my journey. Okay. I had to be with my people. I had to be organizing and I had to be in the middle Mm. and the center of what was going on. Okay. So I did that, and then, um, and it was with an organization called the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Okay. SNCC. That's what they call it. Mm. And then I began getting, um, hearing more about Africa. Okay. Hearing more about the movement here. Okay. Um, and feeling that it, I was a part of that, and that the movement should be more than just in the States, more than just in the South or whatever, but that it was all over the world, wherever African people were. Okay. And we call that Pan-Africanism. Mm -hmm. And there was a person who came and taught me about that, and his name was John Henry Clark. Okay. And he's on the wall. Yeah, we will go there. Okay. I have to see all of them. All right. All of them. I don't yeah, them he before. would want you to see him. Yeah. He was an excellent teacher, and he was like a father to me. Ooh. And that was my process mm. that began, and I just got deeper and deeper, and I've always been very political okay. in that what I wanted for our people was power. Mm. And in 1965, I came here. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So, and there were a lot of people, well, there was a community of people who were from different places. They were from the States or the Caribbean and, you know, different places. And they were in a movement here. Okay. Ghana was very much at that time a central place for political Africans throughout the world, revolutionary Africans mm -hmm. throughout the world. Mm -hmm. They were used to meet here. Okay. And I met all of them, and that was very exciting. Wow. And in fact, when I came in 65, um, there was a summit meeting of the OAU at that time, mm -hmm. Organization of African Unity, which okay. predates the AU. Okay. Right? And Nkrumah was president. Wow. I saw in him, I saw him, mm -hmm. uh, Sekou Toure from Guinea. Okay. Um, NASA was there, a lot of big people, mm -hmm. right? And I was at the meeting. Okay. So, but I was very young. Wow. I didn't fully understand what, you know, how great it was and yeah. stuff. But, mm. um, and then I left from there and went east and went to Tanzania and then Kenya, Ethiopia, um, Cairo and Egypt and so forth. Okay. But anyway, all of this is part of my journey. Okay. And there's much, 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 much more. M much more because... <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to say this. Let me say this. Ghana. Okay. Let's skip a whole lot of years. Yeah. Till 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is... Um, 
something that I organize in the States. Okay. And it's called Abakusim Sumsum. Okay. Abakusim You speak tree? All right. You know what that means? No. Okay, it's the spirit of history. Okay. I mean, that's how it's translated. It's really much deeper than right. that. Yeah. Okay. For sure. And this that I organized was in um, honor of Nana John Henry Clark okay. and other warrior ancestors of Africa. Oh, by the way, I skipped over. Um, I taught for 24 years as a professor. Wow. I taught about African culture, and that's what I studied. That's great. Was African civilization, African and all of that. Okay. So anyway, coming back to 2018, um, I had one of of my uh, of these events where we bring people together mm -hmm. to f feel and be the ancestors. Mm -hmm. They become the warrior ancestors. Yeah. Okay. We we become them, and they become us. Yes. That's very deep, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. And Baba Jerry, we call him Baba Jerry. Okay. He, came, he was in, happened to be in Atlanta in 2018. Okay. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but he was there. Okay. And he came to our event. Mm -hmm. And I think he was impressed by it. It's hard to tell with him. Okay. But um, he told me about the wall. Okay. And I said... And to my people, mm -hmm. I said, we're going. We got to go there. Okay. So the first year that um, they, together, had the celebration of the wall in, in 2018, okay. I was there and okay. brought some of my people who organized mm -hmm. my thing there. So ever since, I saw it as something that I wanted to contribute to, to help with and so forth. Because one of the things I don't like doing, mm -hmm. like we're doing right now, yeah. we're talking. Yeah. I don't like to just talk. Mm -hmm. And there's been a whole lot of talking. Yeah. And there have been a lot of great people like uh, Professor Clark mm -hmm. um, who have said wonderful things to us, but we haven't done anything with it. Yeah. We got to do something with it, and we okay. have to make a change, a huge change. So that's the work I want to do. Okay. So I saw this as a part of that I could help. Okay. And it could help me. Okay. And then we started talking about building this library, mm -hmm. which I saw when it was when there was just the ground, mm -hmm. and they were, as we say, breaking the ground yeah. for it. I get very, very excited. So that's my involvement and connection. With this and I'll stop. There. That's very great. That's why I say grandma. Because coming to Ghana 1964, <laughs> that's very long journey. My mom was not born that time. So that's, <laughs> that's very long journey. So mm -hmm. mom, tell me a little one. You being African woman and going Is that me? You're yes. talking to me? Okay. Yeah. Yes. And going through this lesson. Have you taught your children, your grandchildren? The same Absolutely. Way? Because the reason why I'm asking this no, question. No, it's a very good question. African woman, African man is a traditionalist. But later you find his son or Absolutely. In the Christian side or in the church. Absolutely. So you see that all the time grudge is in the house because Absolutely. this one said there's a Jesus. This one said there's no Jesus. So no, you're I love right. to direct or to ask this question. Why are we here and our children are here? So, no, no, no. It's yeah. a very good question. Because, yeah. And I think that we have to, um, that's why the wall and working with the children is so important. Okay. Because if you look at it, um, most of our uh, leaders yeah. that you could even see, some of them I know, yeah. um, or knew, their children didn't follow in their footsteps. No. Not so you're all. absolutely right. And... So the, the issue becomes, what do we put in place for our children to raise our children okay. in the, the uh, way of African power, that okay. that's something they should seek. Okay. Now, if we raise them to uh, just want to have uh, money, a lot of money, okay. a lot of gadgets, yeah. Uh, material things, mm -hmm. big, you know, houses House, that impress house, people and yeah. all of that, then they're going to be end up 
being part of the enemy's camp. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And they will not be doing what we say yeah. we want them to do. Yeah. So we've got to put much more emphasis on, as we say, socializing the children. Yeah. That is starting from taking control of, of what goes into their heads yes. from the time they're born. Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. um, that work is extremely important. Now, m my daughter, okay. you know what a comfo is? Comfo? A comfo. A comfo. Somebody tell him, a comfo. Priest? Priest? Yes. Uh, Traditional uh, comfort, priest. yes. That's my daughter. At what? She is, my daughter is an a comfo. She came here. Okay. She was trained. Okay. And, th and so that's what she, she does. Hmm? Why is she now? She's in the States, but she comes here much more That's than That's great. I would like me. to see her one day. You That's will. Very great. I'll yeah. make sure you do next time she comes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so let me go to Mr. Jerry again. Mr. Jerry, take the mic for me. You have this. And you say you, you are being in uh, Legon. Did they give you any part in Legon for you to hide there? generation who are coming from the university? Um, I don't want to misstate. I was going to Legon because the students were there. Okay. I wasn't working for the university. Okay. I was living, you know, behind Hacho and Kwabinya. And I moved there intentionally so I could go talk to students okay. about these very issues. Mm -hmm. But I was not part of staff okay. or anything like mm -hmm. that. But that is where I learned that um, uh, the students at that level mm -hmm. uh, have internalized so much of what they've been taught yeah. in this kind of colonial school structure yeah. that uh, it's very difficult to Jeez. penetrate the heart. Wow. This is one reason we went younger. Wow. Yeah, and um, that's not, of course, not all of them. Yeah. But I think we have more um, success when we, as she was just mentioning, yeah. We should be in charge of what they hear, see, and feel mm -hmm. from the very beginning. If we are not, then it, it's unreasonable for us to expect them mm -hmm. to go off and fulfill the mission that we think we have outlined. Okay. So that's. So I wasn't at Legon in any official so capacity. So tell me, you no. have been 22 or 20 years coming before you, you, you saw that, you have seen that, no, this is how it is, let me go to this side. Your mom and your dad, when you are growing up, have they so, oh, go to church, go to church, go to church before you yourself, you realize that, no, this is where I have to be? No, my mother and father um, were not that way. My mother was the type who would, I can give you this example, she almost built a church okay. without joining the church. Wow. Because she wanted a place black people could go where we didn't have to ask anyone else for permission. Okay. So she was more in interest, interested in institutions mm -hmm. controlled by black people mm. than she was this church business. Okay. I don't think she ever joined any church. All right. Thank you. Uh, I will not waste <laughs> much time. I, w I want us to go down, right? Uh, oh. You okay. have to go to the wall. Okay. Show me the pictures placing on the wall. And the reason why, let us say, maybe somebody is there is not somebody who teach like how they taught to my grandma, by somebody or maybe you don't know him from anywhere. But, but before we go, what inspire you to put all our leaders who fight for us, who, 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 who did something for Africa, but even when you go to their own family, their grandfather don't know them. That this is what our grandfather or our grandmother did for what inspired you to put them on the wall one by one for we the generation to come and see that no this person was part of African warriors. Well I think that's simple in a way. Uh, Marcus Garvey said what man has done man can do mm. and I think one of our problems is we don't know what we have even done. Yeah. So if you're a child and you go to school and you don't know that uh, long before Pythagoras went to learn from the ancient Africans, we already had the mathematics that is now called the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, yeah. Our children don't know that. Mm -hmm. So once they know these things, yeah. then uh, they begin to become more confident 
uh, you know, about themselves okay. and know their capacity and potential mm -hmm. to recreate civilizations. Okay. And so to me, it was just, they have to know their capacity and we have plenty history. I mean, this wall, uh, a, a few of us can make 10 of these walls and still have so many names left over. So this by, by no means is comprehensive. It's just where we're starting okay. because we have so, so many Africans and our children need to know that we have done this and that where we are today is not where we've been for the most of our history. Okay. Where we are today is a very small period of time relative to how long African people have been powerful, yeah. have been sovereign, yeah. have been free, yeah. and had our own minds. Yeah. So now we're in a what I call an aberrant condition, which okay. means it's not a normal condition. Okay. And we have to get out of that. Mm -hmm. And we know that if our children really understand and internalize their capacity, their potential, mm -hmm. then we'll just come out of it. It will be a natural emergence out of it if we are able to. Right, then we end this session and we go to the wall. Okay, I'll let Mama with your final word. Uh -oh. My final word is, you know, we're trying to put up something together that is called sun Okay. Go back to your roots. Okay. And um, it is, you know, we want the women to bring the women together okay. to go back mm. and then practice our own tradition and culture okay because uh, it takes women to bring to train the children yeah so we the women have to teach the children our history and culture okay so if we go if we move forward yeah. we can change certain things in this country thank you very much for that word a woman who give life to every living nature we have today so if you say that i appreciate it thank you so much you're welcome you stand here, sir. Yeah, Mr. Jerry, you're fine. Oh, you gonna say something else? Just make well, sure you get me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. I thought maybe that was my final word. But my final, final word mm. is uh, <laughs> we have to keep fighting. Yeah. And we can't give up. And we cannot be discouraged yeah. or demoralized mm -hmm. by some of the problems we see in front of us because mm. we are the people who started civilization. Mm. We are the parents of humanity. We are the people, so there's no reason for us to uh, be discouraged. We can do it. Thank you. Yes. Grandma. I need that. Good. Okay, I want to start by saying the importance of the work of Ame Wuga. Yeah. Um, we went earlier to the ocean. And that was for um, spiritual connection and healing, yeah. but also strengthening. Yeah. That is our power. Yeah. And when we understand mm -hmm. the, the um, importance yeah. of African spirit, yeah. then we'll begin to get the power that we need for the political thing okay. we have to do. Now, those ancestors are us. Okay. But those, that's not just words. Yes. Given the um, African conception yeah. of life, yeah. our worldview, we call it, mm. it is that there is not a separation between past, present, and future. There's a continuity. Yes. And that we, what we are able to do is reach in a sacred place yeah. or sacred time. Mm -hmm. When we do that, our children can actually experience themselves as those ancestors. And those ancestors are able to, they're able to communicate with us. So ancestral communion becomes the most important uh, spiritual practice that we can have, okay? Now, that also um, affects how we heal physically. Yes. So that a person like uh, Amiruga is bringing to us a traditional spiritual form of healing yes. that connects us to nature, yeah. to what grows around and so forth, mm -hmm. where when we depend totally on uh, a Western yeah. way of, of uh, they don't even do healing. Mm. I don't know what they 
who they focus on the disease <laughs> yeah. kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, then what happens is that is also turning us against who we are yeah. spiritually yeah. as a people. Yes. So I just wanted to say all of that is one mm -hmm. and that what you see here is spiritual, yeah. is very deeply spiritual, yes. which does not mean that it's not also political and physical. You see what I'm saying? Yes. It just means that the origin yes. is spirit. Mm -hmm. So to know yourself yeah. as any of these powerful ancestors mm. is to know your power. Yes. And that's what we have to give to our children. Okay. And that's I'm good. a... a Obama understands yeah. that, and yeah. that's what I love about her. Thank you. That's grandma. And I love this interview. Seriously, I, I love this interview because, see, grandma, how old are you, please? 81. Okay. Right. Yes. That's what I'm, that's the reason why I'm calling her grandma. I don't know her age, but when you have spiritual eye, you can see it. But climbing, the step coming to where I'm sitting, I am asking you, 50 years man, you 50 years young lady, can you do that? But because you think your ancestors are demonic, but grandma believe. It. So grandma word is, you have to know yourself. Then your ancestors' spirit will connect to yours. Then you can be able to do what you wanted to do. So don't sit down there and say what you don't know. I have here a lot here, and I know. You have learned a lot from it. Mommy said something, and let me tell you the truth. Women are the head of everything, Ooh. if you don't know. Women are the head of everything. So African, let's stop telling our ladies that they are the second or they have removed them from. No woman was removed from the lips of a man. A woman who gives life to every living thing. So let's give that respect to them. So she said, when they have lived and trained their ch children very well, African will be very powerful again. So let's give them a chance. Let them train their, our children for us so that we can be able to get what we want. Otherwise, we will be in one place saying that we are fighting, we are fighting. Right. Men, right. you just go and come. But then they are there 24 7 roaming about cooking, the same time watching the child, the same time seeing something different. You can never do that. So give them the chance to lead the African continent for us. Thank you for watching this interview and share this video. Subscribe, like, and comment as well. Thank you very much. My name is JMTVH. Bye bye.